and Ron Hedges, and we're about to get underway here as the kick is away. End over end, but short. Hits at the 20 and bounces into the arms of Haley at the 22, and he's nailed at the 25-yard line. So it's a seven-yard return to the opening kickoff, and from the 20... In the extra point and a field goal against Pickerington, and that was the difference in that game. Lancaster offense to the line of scrimmage. Grilly lines uh, Chad Householder up in front of Jason Effinger and gives Effinger the ball, and he cuts through the middle to the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, fumbles the football, and at the 50-yard line, it looks like the... Blue Bombers have recovered the ball, and they have. So it was a burst through the middle for Jason Effinger, and he puts the pressure right square on the Lancaster defense to start this game now. Even though the Gales are undefeated, they are minus one in turnover ratio. Uh, William Johnson, the speedster quarterback, sets his offense at the line, drops the throw, and wheels one over the head of the intended receiver and over the head of the Lancaster defense on the first play. And they come back to the line of scrimmage on second down, 10 yards to go from the 50-yard line. They line up now in a power eye formation, and it is the tailback who gets the call, bounces off one tackle, and is dropped by the second at the 50-yard line. It was Brian Jeter carrying the football, and he gets no gain. It was George Howell goes wide to the far side of the field and Marshall to the near side, and again they line up in the power eye formation with William Johnson, the quarterback, dropping three steps, firing again way over the head of intended receiver George Howell. And again, it was Rob Clarich, and back to receive is Ron Hedges for Lancaster. And hurry while inventory is good. Rebates end October the 6th. Lehman Hendron Pontiac Cadillac GMC truck, located just north of Lancaster on Route 33. It's fourth down and ten. There's the snap and the punt, and Green shanks one off the side of his foot, and the flag goes down, and the ball hits at the 35 of the Gales and bounces backwards to the 40-yard line, so it's a nine-yard... He's a nice linebacker. He really is. Back to the line of scrimmage comes William Johnson, the quarterback for Cleveland East, and here comes a reverse play, and the running back, Brian Jeter, is caught in the backfield and finally bowls his way, and another flag goes down at about the 36-yard line, and that might be a face mask call. Lancaster 20-yard line. We are scoreless. We're in the first quarter. George Howell goes wide left. Alan Strozier drops into the slot on that side, and Collins is wide right as Williams pitches to his tailback, Jeter, and Jeter moves left, trying to sweep, gets to the line of scrimmage, and gets some positive yardage. He gains two to the 18-yard line for the first positive yardage gained by the penalties. <laughs> Whoops. Yep, here we go. Strozier in the slot right. They have three wide receivers lined up in an eye formation behind Johnson. He runs the option, and he gives to his uh, fullback, and he gets some yardage down inside the 15-yard line, or down near the 15, a gain of the field goal kicker. Johnson gets the uh, snap and gives to his fullback, and he drives through Monolito Abernathy to the five into the end zone for the touchdown. A huge hole for the first time tonight, and George Howell in the extra point attempt will be by Big Allen Davis, the 315-pounder. Six-nothing score early in the first quarter. There's the snap. It's short, but he scoops it up and gets it down, and the kick is up, and it is no good. It is good. It is good. $519. That's Carter Plumbing, Electric, and Heating, just south of Lancaster on Route 33. Super Z 103. Alan Davis to kick it off. We have a 7 0 Cleveland East score early in the first quarter, and Davis again with a very short kick, and it is Burke who gathers it at the 25 to the 30, to the 31, maybe the 32. Down he goes, and. Uh, the ball will be played first. Well, you're in the first half. That's true. They have, haven't they? Chad Householder is the Lancaster fullback, and Jason Effinger is the tailback. Grilly gets the snap and gives to Effinger, and Effinger up the middle again to the 35, the 36, the 37, 38, and even the 39-yard line will not be taken down until a whole passel of those 40. Let's call it a generous, uh, we're being generous, giving him eight yards. You are being yards. generous. <laughs> eight, eight, let's give him eight. And it's uh, flags fly again as third line. It's first down and ten for the Lancaster Gales at their own 45-yard line. Hey, the crowd woke up. Gales come up with four wideouts and one running back, and Jimmy Grilly rolls back to throw. He rolls right. He's being rushed. He turns, and he pops it, and he hits it. At the 48-yard line, Dave Rogers makes the catch. Mon Monolito Abernathy makes the tackle. It's a short game. Four receivers, and they throw a little three- or four-yard pass. Taylor comes out with Rogers to the near side. Uh, 
Wide receiver to the far side, two running backs. Grilly drops the throw. Little shovel pass is fumbled, uh, but it is a pass, a forward pass, and will be an incompletion rather than a fumble. Well, that's the first time they've run back at the 45-yard line, but the ball comes back out to the 48. It is third down and seven yards to go for Lancaster. Third and seven, first quarter. Cleveland East leading 7 nothing, and another has had great success running that ball down the middle. Shane Bingham has now come into the game as uh, Lancaster lines up in a power I formation. And uh, the ball is given to Effinger, and he gets the first down as he bowls his way inside the 45 to the 44-yard line, picking up three on the play. First down, 10, Golden Gales from the 44-yard line of Cleveland. They forgot our light switch. We'll have to uh, check that out here. <laughs> Jimmy Grilly brings his offense to the line of scrimmage at the 44-yard line, and uh, Grilly rolls left to throw. He looks, and he's got Paley, and he throws to him, and he makes a diving catch at the 25-yard line. A great reception by Travis Paley to the 25-yard line, a 19-yard pickup, and first down 10, down 10 for the Golden Gale. Well, that pass was nicely thrown as Grilly ran against his normal throwing motion going left. Rogers comes to uh, one side, uh, goes into the slot, four wide outs, one running back, really drops three steps, looks right, fires right, complete to Taley, but Taley is uh, driven back from the 20 to the 23-yard line. They'll probably give him to the 20 for forward progress. They 21, so it's a gain of three, second down and seven yards to go. Well, that's a dangerous pass, too, if that ball is not on target and not thrown with enough zip. Monolito Abernathy's gone. It's Effinger driving to the 20, the 15, the 10 yard line and driven down at the 10. Jason Effinger takes it from the 21 yard line to the 10 again. Continues his assault on a 100 yard rush and he's done it in both games so far this year and he's got 46 yards and four carries in the first quarter. Jimmy Grilly completing three or four passes so far. It is Effinger again to the five and uh, driven back to the seven. They'll give him to about the six for forward progress. A gain of four. Allen Davis, that 300. Not to be confused with Miami's defensive years ago, the Killer Bs, no, the Killer A's. The A's and the D's. Lancaster back to the line of scrimmage at the six-yard line. It is second down. Hand off to Effinger. Effinger inside the five, the three, the two, and down near the goal line. Lancaster is saying we have a touchdown, but the officials do not buy it. The ball will be placed just in down. And this has been a very productive drive, and it makes a statement for the Gales as Cleveland East scored very quickly after the turnover, and now the Gales come right back down. And it's Effinger for the score, and he's there. Touchdown, Lancaster. Jason Effinger makes it a 7-6 score as he drives it in from one yard out. 4.49 remaining in the first quarter of play, and Jason Hardy will come. Hardy will be kicking, and Ron Hedges will be holding. The offensive line is over to the right, only the center, the holder, and the kicker in the center of the field. And now the offensive line comes back over. One of the defenders for Cleveland East picked up a penalty flag, it looked like. <laughs> and now there comes one down. So uh, may it be delay of game on Lancaster. Ceremoniously call the play. I'm sure everybody on the sidelines got that word. Back to the line they come. The full house backfield and Grilly under center. Gets the snap, gives to Effinger, and he drives toward the goal line, and he is stopped short. Evinger is stopped by the left. Plaza Shopping Center Lancaster. Open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Festival foods, low prices everywhere you look. Super Z 103. The Gales kick it off, and Monolito Abernathy gathers it at the 10-yard line. Comes up field to the 15 and the 20 and tries to cut to the wide side of the field, and he is driven down at the 20-yard line. 10-yard return on the Lancaster kickoff and in a 7-6 lead. William Johnson, the quarterback, brings his offense to the line. He has Monolito Abernathy at fullback and Brian Jeter, the tailback, in the eye, and he gives it to Abernathy. And Abernathy drives forward to the 24-yard line for a gain of four, where Billy Burke brings him down, the 204-pound junior, along with Andy Dean. Second down, six yards to go, and it appears that Cleveland East is involved, and they're just going for some quick straight-ahead hitters and hoping to get through there quickly. It that means the linemen don't have to sustain their blocks nearly as long. And now two wideouts, and uh, flag flies. I believe that'll be a motion penalty against the uh, Blue Bombers because their offense was confused and was not set, and the gain was uh, a couple of yards uh, as the pleading uh, 
four or five, I believe. Yes, three of four. Sounds like your wedge shots. Yeah. Wild and long. And there's a pitch to the tailback Dieter, and he is driven down behind the line of scrimmage at the 18-yard line. The penalty took the ball back to the 20, and now taken down a minute, 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Last week, the Bombers led Cincinnati Moeller 8-3 at the end of the quarter and trailed them only 17-8 at halftime and kind of let that go because the, the players are turning, carrying signals and line line blocking assignments as long as they don't move their hands. High formation, slot left on third and long, and uh, Williams throws and overthrows his receiver again. Three times, it is fourth down and 17 from the 13-yard line, and the Blue Bombers are going to have to punt, and here, again, they're short a player, and uh, racing off the bench, uh, uh, one comes in to give them the 11, and now they're trying to uh, get a punt away before the time expires, and they do get a snap, and they do get a punt, and it's an end-over-end -end kick that is taken at the 46. To the 40 goes Hedges, to the 35, and down the sidelines and drilled out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. So it's a 33-yard punt, a 16-yard return. Taps his headgear and sets his offense. He has three wide outs to the right side of the field, flooding the right side with receivers. He has only Jason Effinger in his backfield. This might be a good time for the Gales to go deep down the field with something across the middle. That might be a really nice play at this time. Really uh, ready to call the play. Sends Effinger in motion. He has no running backs left. Effinger comes left. Three receivers right. Flag down as Jimmy drops the throw. He fires. It is tipped and incomplete. But penalty flags everywhere and unusual. And that play was doomed from the start as Effinger went in motion and fell down. And then felt he was behind on the count and started upfield too soon. And there's the five yards. Householder now goes in motion. Effinger gets the handoff. Flag flies. Effinger into the 30 and to the 29-yard line. And that's about it. The play starts here from the 27 of the Blue Bombers. We might be here a while tonight, Dick. Lancaster up with two wide outs and one running back. And Grilly almost runs into his running back, rolling left to throw the ball. Gets a nice block, but throws it into the ground in front of his intended receiver, Jason Green. At the uh, took a bunch of uh, weight on, but uh, he held his own. Now it's trips to the right on second down 10 from the 27-yard line. Jimmy Grilly gives to Effinger, and he finds a slot down the middle to the 20, still on his feet, and fights forward to around the 15-yard line, first and 10. Lancaster from about the 16, a gain of a... Calls it to his teammates and sends them back to the line with Haley and Bowers uh, wide to the right, and the Householder and Effinger lined up behind Jimmy in an eye formation. It is Effinger to the 15, to the 10, to the 9, maybe the 8-yard line as he drives it forward. From the 16 to the 8, an 8-yard eight pickup. Second and two. And this has really been another now remaining in the first quarter. It's a 7-6 score. Cleveland East leading Lancaster. Bowers goes far right. Paley comes left. I formation. Fullback Chad Householder to the 5. Spins out of a tackle to the 4. And down he goes. First and goal. Gales at the 4-yard line. Chad Householder, the 209-pound senior, lugging the ball. And here comes Shane Bingham in the game. So something that happened on the play. Effinger and Householder. Full house backfield. Mike Collison also on the field. I think Effinger's still on the sideline. And the ball goes to Householder, and he drives it to the end zone. Touchdown, Lancaster. Chad Householder scoring for the Golden Gales on... Uh, their final offensive play of the quarter, only 19 seconds remain, and it is now 12 on to attempt the extra point. The offensive line lined up to the right side, only the holder, the kicker, and the center in the center of the field. One wide receiver to the left side, and they're going to go with it as Hedges rolls left to throw the ball. He looks, now he turns to run with it, spins it toward the end zone, and he is stopped short again. He does not get there, and the score is 12-7. Eight will... Uh, Televise this uh, game tomorrow, Channel 8, here in Lancaster. Here comes the kickoff now. Jason Hardy gets it away. High, end over end, and short. Gathered at the 22-yard line, and to the 30, and to the 31, and that's about as far as Moses Marshall goes, and a fumble on the return, and it's recovered by Lancaster with 14 seconds to go in the quarter. 
the Gales have recovered the Moses Marshall fumble, and they'll have it first and 10 at the 30. It was Andy Deem coming off that football. The two really nice when you can start one series on the 27, and you, then you get the ball back, and it's just inside the 30. That usually results in points. And Jimmy Grilly, uh, with an eye formation, drops to throw, rolls left, and looks. He looks deep, and he's got Paley, and he overshoots him in the end zone, incomplete. Ball comes back to the early three of six and uh, nearly had his first touchdown pass of the season on the last throw. It's now second down and 10 to go for Lancaster from the 30 of the Blue Bombers. As uh, we begin second period action, 12 to seven, Lancaster leading. Jimmy Grilly sets his team in an eye formation. Pitches to Effinger who sweeps left. Effinger for five, Effinger for eight, and down he goes on the far sidelines after a pickup of eight yards to the 22-yard line, and it was William Johnson, the offensive quarterback and defensive. Uh, that, that's one thing Lancaster does to opponents. They wear people down. It is difficult to play both ways, uh, especially against kids that are playing one way. Grilly gives to Effinger. He's got five. He's got nearly ten and uh, driven back to the 20-yard line, but he made progress to the 17. And... Uh, the year just moments ago. Effinger scores his third to make it a 12-7, but Lancaster unable to convert on two-point conversions either time. Effinger down the middle to the 10, to the 8, to the 7-yard line, and down he goes at the 7 for a 9-yard gain. Oh, and I would imagine in this one he'll find it. If he better get it pretty quick the way this game's starting to look because it looks like Hedges will have a better shot to throw one than Jimmy will. That's tonight. possible. Split back. And it is Effinger to the five-yard line. And the first down for Lancaster. First and goal at the five. Gain of a couple on the green as a, as a blocker. Keith Smithfield has a very interesting halftime show for you, by the way, on Where Are They Now? We'll feature that in a little while. Really back to the line on first and goal. Gives to the first man through. And a fumble into the end zone. And it's recovered by the Bombers. And they'll take the ball at the 20-yard line on the touchback if it holds up. And it is. At first with the football, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. William Johnson, the quarterback, gives to his first man through, and it's Brian Jeter. Uh, no, it isn't. It's uh, Monolito Abernathy, and he gets only a yard. Billy Burke won decent offensive play, and that resulted in a touchdown, a 14-yard run up the middle by Monolito Abernathy. It's now second down and nine. I formation, and Johnson, options, gives the football to the first man, and again, uh, he gets a couple of yards to the 23. Rod Blanton makes the stop on Montalito Abernathy. Those guys for Cleveland East are working so hard trying to get something going. And Bombers coming back to the line of scrimmage. We haven't had a penalty for a while, Dick. That's right. It's uh, gone rather smoothly. 8.25 remaining in the first half. 12-7 score. And the Gales are leading. One running back, two wideouts, and a man in motion. And Johnson on the option turns to throw and he fires into a crowd and it is nearly intercepted at the 39 yard line it hasn't been close yet and that one that time Lancaster did have somebody a little deeper and it was a linebacker and they came a lot closer to getting that interception Julian Green back to do the punting Packard is back to receive along with Hedges and there's the high end over in kick and Hedges has it hit on his helmet and bounce off, but I think they may call the Cleveland East team for interference on the uh, reception, and the ball was recovered by Cleveland East at the 46. He backed up uh, at their own end zone to punt it. Julian Green will do the punting. And Hedges and uh, Packard are standing at the box twice weekly for three hours each session, and there is no charge for books or materials. For more information, call me, Jerry Woodard, at 687-7330. Back at Fulton Field, I'm Dick Shore with Harp Summers. There's the snap from center, and there's a tackle at the one-yard line and a fumble forward to the five, and that's where the Gales will take it over. Green had no chance to get that punt away. He positioned is in their corner on that. Cleveland East, a rather talented athlete, but certainly not focused. Lancaster comes to the line of scrimmage, and Grilly gives to Householder, and he is taken down at the line of scrimmage, the five-yard line, second down and goal at the five. Early out at the six-yard line, and the Gales come back to the line of scrimmage with a full-house backfield. Householder is the up back, and Effinger the deep back, and it's, or rather, Col Collison, and Collison drives it to the one-yard line before he is thrown backwards by Jerome Davis. Mike Collison, a sophomore, 5'10", inside the one-yard line. Grilly again lines them up in a full house backfield and the third one and it is 
Bingham, I believe. Might be Shane Bingham. Shane Bingham. That's well, the lineup. And his quarterback sneak and Grilly nudging, nudging and pushing and finally gets there. Touchdown, Lancaster. Jimmy Grilly on the quarterback sneak at his second rushing touchdown of the season. And the score is 18 to 7. Lancaster with six. Ponderosa show? Yeah, I like that name. The extra point try will be by Jason Hardy. Uh, if, in fact, the Gales choose to kick, they have not tried a kick yet tonight. They lead it uh, 18 to 7. The Offensive line uh, over to the right. Now they come back to uh, center of the field. And this one they might, in fact, kick. Well, we bragged the special teams and no penalties. And look what we've had tonight. There it is. The kick is up. And it is no good. So the Gales continue uh, on the snide. Park National Bank, member FDIC. WSWZ. Hardy gets into the kickoff. And another penalty flag goes down. Hardy will get after it again here. Uh, maybe. And, and he doesn't even move. The ball falls off the tee, and the team was just start. Hardy will try it again. This one he gets into. And it is taken at the 13-yard line by Jeter to the 15 to the 20, cuts it to the center of the field to the 25 and the 30, puts his head down and bowls it to the 33-yard line. 20-yard return of the kickoff, and it will be first and 10 from the 33-yard line. And that ball, that was preceded by a fumble. Mm -hmm. George Howell is a wide out to the near side. Strozier to the far side. Three running backs. And the quarterback, William Johnson, calling from the snap from his own 33 and complete a pass so far tonight. They've got to do something positive in a hurry or else Lancaster will get the ball back with plenty of time to score again before the half. Bombers back to the line of scrimmage. Here comes a double reverse, and it's Jeter with the ball, and he's got room. 30, 35, 40, 45, 48, 49 yard line, but I think he stepped out of bounds back at the 46, but it is positive yardage from the festival food. Duncan's Diamonds and Gold in Lancaster's River Valley Mall is not your typical mall jewelry store. Duncan's is a family business, not a large chain of thousands of stores with high operating costs. Duncan's Diamonds and Gold's unique relationship with the world's largest diamond cutting firm and manufacturing ability enables them to give you factory outlet prices on beautiful fine jewelry. Johnson, he left the field and Paul Lane came in to replace him and the first play he runs is to Monolito Abernathy and he sends him right up the gut for an eight-yard gain across midfield to the Lancaster 46, and it's second down and two yards to go. And uh, Johnson is back in now, scrambles away as he goes back to pass, breaks it open to the 40 of Lancaster, to the 35, and finally is dropped at the 32-yard line by Billy Burton for the Blue Bombers. They trail 18-7 to to the Lancaster Golden Gales. Eye formation to the line of scrimmage. Johnson, who was shaken up, but back in there at quarterback, gets the snap. And he runs the ball himself on the option and gets it inside the 30 to about the 29 and is thrown backwards. And that may have been a broken play because he went by his own self out there and uh, scrapped for yardage to at least the 30. They Tom McCurdy, our guest following the game. And then scoreboard time. Okay. I formation. Slot left. Second down nine. Johnson back to throw it, and he goes deep, and again, he way overthrows his mark, and again, it was Claridge back there, and Rob, they're a little slow getting out of that huddle again, and they bring it back to the line of scrimmage. They set up the offense with one running back and two wings, one in motion. Here comes that double reverse again, and Jeter is hit at the 30, bounces off the tackle, gets inside to the 28-yard line, and the Lancaster defense was much more aware of that. Lancaster with three touchdowns. Uh, Householder, Effinger, and Grilly, but no extra points. Tried to run it twice and kick it once, and nothing's worked. Wing back in motion. One running back for William Johnson. Flag down. Johnson throws. And this one is uh, uh, off the mark. I think it was short of the line. He has Chad Householder at fullback and sophomore Mike Cullison at Lancaster leading Cleveland East. And the Gales have the football with 3.09 remaining in the first half of play. It is first down and 10 from Lancaster's own 28-yard line. And Jimmy Grilly rolls right. He looks. And he throws deep for Taylor, and it is tipped and caught on the rebound by Taylor. To the 30, to the 20, to the 10, 
to the five. Touchdown, but he steps out of bounds at the 20-yard line, and back it comes to the 20. What a brilliant reception by Travis Haley, who took the ball that was tipped by the defender and ripped it for 52 yards to the 20-yard line. First turn. So it's a 52-yard pickup, the biggest gain of the night for the Golden Gales, and to the line of scrimmage they come. 2.59 remaining in the half, and Grilly wants to uh, fake the throw, and it's a quarterback draw, and down the field he goes to the 20, to the 19, and the 18-yard line, and that's about it. Three to the 17-yard line, it's now second down, and seven yards to go as play resumes. Grilly sets his offense. Cullison is back in the backfield uh, with him, and he gets the handoff to the 15, to the 13, and maybe the 12. That will bring on a third and two for Lancaster. His hands, because he does have two fumbles tonight. It's third down two for the Gales as they bring it back to the line of scrimmage. They have uh, slots both ways, and Grilly back to throw on third and two. Slips, nearly falls, regains his footing, starts to run with it to the 10. Again, slips and falls at the six-yard line but it is first down and goal for Leicester. Jimmy, having trouble holding his footing, slipped wide. Ralph Bowers and uh, Travis Taylor come wide to the near side in tandem. Really sets his backfield up in an eye formation, and he gives to Householder, who plows forward to the end zone. Touchdown, Leicester. That was not Householder, I believe. It was Collison. Mike Collison with the score for Leicester, and it is 24-7, to Golden Gale. Well, that's his first touchdown ever uh, for the Lancaster High School varsity. Mike Cullison, 5'10", 150-pound sophomore, gets his score. He joins Householder and Grilly and Effinger with touchdowns tonight. It's 24-7. Hardy uh, will try the extra point, and this one he kicks, and it does not go through. The Gales can... WSWZ. Hardy to kick it off, and it's Jeter and Davis deep, and it's Jeter who gathers it at the six-yard line to the 10, to the 20, and he speeds up the far sidelines to the 26, 27, 22-yard return to a near the 28-yard line, and the Gales will play. George Howell wide to the near side, puts Brian Jeter in the slot, leaves Monolito Abernathy as his only running back, and he uh, slots it to the far side also. Johnson gets the snap and back to throw, and he goes down the middle, and this one is in the range, but it is trapped by George Howell, and that's as close. Their side, Montalito Abernathy uh, goes to the far side, and Johnson gives to the uh, running back, uh, Abernathy, and he comes inside to the 30-yard line, and that's as far as he goes, a gain of three from the Bombers with 48 seconds remaining in the quarter, and again, they have double slots. Strozier is in the slot to the far side. Jeter near side. Abernathy the running back. And again, it is Abernathy getting the call to the 35, the 36-yard line. Down he goes at the 36 with 33 seconds remaining. And I believe Lancaster wants to stop the clock, and they do. 25-yard line in their own territory. It's going to be a little and pooch punt, Dick. Julian Green is the punter, but he does have... Uh, the ability to throw. No, he's up short. He kicks it, and it is at the 40, 35, and the Gales let it roll to the 34-yard line. Pretty good job. The punter, or punter penalty, excuse me. 34-yard line, first down, 10, Lancaster. 17 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Jimmy Grilly with one running back, drops the throw. Three-step drop. Turns and wheels one. It is intercepted at the 48, but penalty flag remaining in the half. And look where Stuyvesan is. He's in the slot. Stuyvesan is, in fact, to the right side in the slot, and uh, the only running back is Chad Householder. The other play that's available here towards the end of the half that teams do run is the old hookup. Here we go. Final play of the half, possibly. 24-7 Lancaster lead, and Grilly under center for the snap. And a Caldwell Banker, I just talked to the lender. Everything's fine. We stay in touch and make sure you know as much as we know, as soon as we know it. Chris with Caldwell Banker. Congratulations. This should be the last play of the first half as Gurley brings them back to the line of scrimmage, moving it uh, via penalty only. With a second to go, they have uh, the opportunity now to throw one in the end zone and uh, pray for a catch. Gales to the line of scrimmage. Gurley drops the throw, rolls left. He cocks it, and he lets it fly for Stuyvesant, and it is incomplete, and a penalty flag goes down again. 
And you cannot end the half on a penalty. Purchase. Fresh ground beef, 98 cents a pound. That's festival. They are uh, properly aligned, and the Lancaster team apparently has uh, suddenly lining up in the neutral zone. I think four times that happened to him. There's the whistle, and Hardy is ready to go, and the second half is underway here at Lancaster High School, and the kick bounces and taken on first bounce by Jerome Davis at the 18 to the 20 to the 25 and to the 28 and that is it down he goes first and 10 from the 28 yard line a 16 yard return to the kickoff and uh, the Bombers will play Billy Burke the linebacker calls the defensive stance and uh, the handoff goes to the first back through and he pulls people with him and it's a new running back for Cleveland it is Derrick Hill, and he gets pretty good yardage in Lee to Zanesville to Middletown. Second down and a long yard to go, and uh, again, they hand it to Derrick Hill, and he plows forward and looks like he has a first down at the 40-yard line. So in two plays, he picks up 12 yards, 5'6", only 124 pounds. And he is a junior. He's courageous playing it that way. He's in behind two blockers now. And here comes a blitz by Billy Burke. And they pitch it to the uh, deep back. And that's Brian Jeter. And he gets it to the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. A gain of a couple on the play. Andy Dean makes the tackle. Matt Farrell assists on the tackle. But it was a gain of two, second down and eight yards to go. Again, it's the power eye formation, and the pitch goes to Abernathy, and he sweeps left, and he gets only to the 43-yard line. Gain of one. Billy Burke makes the stop, and the sweeps have not worked at all well for Cleveland. He put it up 0 for 7 in the first half. William Johnson, a 200-pound junior quarterback who stands 6 feet tall, steps up under center, calling for the snap. He has an eye formation and one wideout. He pitches, and it is Jeter sweeping. Jeter is hit at the 40, but breaks the tackle and moves back to the line of scrimmage. The 43, that's as far as he can go. It will be fourth down and punt. The stop by Rob Claridge and Billy Burke. Boy, Billy Burke's off to a good second half. Green will be in to do the putting, gets a very wobbly snap, but he gets a line drive punt away and a pretty good one, and it is gathered by Hedges at the 20, and he takes it back to the 27, and that's where it will be first and 10 for the Golden Gale offense. The long snapper uh, really having problems for Cleveland East just getting the ball back that far. That's why they bring that punter up close. Uh, and uh, take the risk on him being blocked because uh, if he can't get the football, he can't punt it. Well, from Pickerington? Yes, he is now graduated, but everybody said he was the best long snapper that ever uh, coached. Every coach that coached him, and he had a couple of them. Here's Effinger sweeping wide for Lancaster, cutting it back into the 30. To the 34 and the 35-yard line, a gain of eight from the 27 to the 35, second down and two for the Golden Gale. And I do believe that. Two yards to go, 8-18 remaining in the third quarter of play, 24-7, to Lancaster leads. Grilly brings his offense to the line of scrimmage with one running back, and he gives him the football, and it's Effinger to the 37, and appears to be just about a yard short of the first down. For the Chieftain. And we'll have all those scores for you following uh, tonight's game and following the Tom McCurdy program. First down, 10 at the Lancaster 37, and Grilly drops the throw. And he fires, and he hits. It's Stuyvesant at the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40, and down he goes. In Cleveland, East territory at the 40-yard line. Jimmy Grilly now 5 of 10 for throwing and for over 100 yards. As the, uh, the play brings it back to the huddle and brings his team to the line. 24-7, Gales lead it. Gales driving at the 40 of the Blue Bombers. Grilly pitches to Effinger, and he sweeps left. He's at the 40, the 35, and down to the 30-yard line before he's taken down, and it appears to be a 10-yard gain and first down yardage for Lancaster. 19 yards rushing and 16 carries tonight. Very efficient running by Effinger. Taley is wide to the far side, Rogers near side, and Grilly drops looking for Taley. He is chased clear back to the 47-yard line, sweeps right now, trying to get that yardage back, and is dragged out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. So he... He went a long way back, clear near midfield, and then swept right and got it. At the end of the half where he rolled out and just threw it away. And now they flood the left side of the field with receivers. Trips left, and Effinger, the only running back, and Grilly drops the throw, and he looks left, and he pump fakes, then he fires, and it is caught. And uh, the ball carrier gets it down to about the 25-yard line for a gain of eight on the play. 4-7 score, the Gales lead it. Taley goes wide to the right. Coming wide left is Dave Rogers. 
Effinger is in the slot, and House are the only running back, and Grilly to throw, and he fires one that bounces off the hands of Jason Green, threw him an incomplete, and it wonder if there is an injury to either Jeter or Abernathy, particularly Abernathy. I don't think I've seen him in the second half. Might be tired. Fourth down, five yards to go. Grilly has uh, trips right, one receiver left, one running back, and Jimmy drops three steps and lobs a touch pass to Taylor and there's his first touchdown pass of the year. From Grilly to Taylor for six. A 25-yard strike from Jimmy Grilly with a nice touch on the ball to Travis Taylor. And Jimmy has his first TD pass of the year. And has to the right side, and, and Grilly really just grooved that one in there, and that was a pretty thing to see. Jason Hardy will attempt the extra point if the Gales prefer to kick, and uh, I think they're going to try it till they get it right. The offensive line comes from the right side back into the center of the field, and the uh, hedges will hold, and Hardy will kick. Snap, fumbled, and uh, being fooled around with by hedges, he finally gets a handle on the ball, but again, no success. Can you believe? Hardy moves on the ball and kicks it away. And it is Jeter at the 9. Up the middle of the field to the 10 and the 20. Cuts it to the far sideline to the 25 and the 30. Breaks the tackle to the 35 and is smothered there. 35-yard line. Nice return of 26 yards. And the Bombers will take it over. First and 10 at their own third quarter of play. Moses Marshall comes well to the near side. Nearly the out-of-bounds marker. Has a wide out. Wide out also to the short side of the field. And back to throw is Johnson. Over the middle. And this one is tipped and intercepted at the 47-yard line by the Gales. It looks like Nate Packard, but I'm not certain of that. Nate Packard intercepting, and that is correct. And it will be Lancaster's football at the 46-yard line. Uh, the first time tonight, Jimmy Grilly may have seen his last action in this game. Wing backs both ways, one running back, and Hedges uh, gives the ball uh, to Collison, but there is a flag down as Collison plows right down the middle inside the 45 to the 43 for a gain of three, but this play been five minutes remaining in the quarter. I formation, wide out either way. That would be uh, Ralph uh, Bowers uh, to one side, Taylor to the other. Tailback, Collison gets the handoff, and Collison inside the 50 and is finally shoved down at about the 45-yard line for a gain of six. It will be Lancaster bringing it to the line of scrimmage, and we see some other changes in that Lancaster offensive line that we'll get to you uh, here in a moment. Uh, Collison was in motion, but no, there goes the flag, and uh, Hedges is back to throw, and he fires complete, but it will be brought back. The completion to the 40-yard line of the Bombers uh, well, Collison would have been all right. Would tend to make the game a little more even here in the second half. Second down and 14 yards to go from the 50-yard line for Lancaster. And it is Hedges to throw. He rolls right. He's back at his own 40. And he lobs it deep for Taylor. And it is incomplete and out of bounds. And no call. Taylor wanted a penalty, I believe, for that are up here in the booth tonight. <laughs> Brian Christian is now in the Lancaster lineup. He and Taylor are in the slot left side as they flood the left with three receivers and Hedges rolls left, gets good protection, and throws deep for Taylor, but overthrows him at the 17-yard line. I have a couple against Pickerington, but basically the offense has either been in good enough field position or moved the ball well enough the last two weeks that Billy Burke has not been back there much. Burke has not had a punt return this year, and there's the snap, and it's on the money, and he kicks it very high and wobbly and toward the sideline, and it is out of bounds. Uh, outside the 20-yard line... We're trying to get a lot of playing time. Well, I still see Burke and Farrell in there. It looks play. like the uh, first-team defense is still on the field. Maybe they get to play the rest of the quarter. Here comes the reverse play, and it's Jeter to the 25 and wobbles his way to the 30-yard line, and a flag flies late. From the 23 to the 30, a gain of uh, Moeller last week. They're here in Lancaster this week, and they are an outmanned crew. William Johnson, the quarterback, sets his team on second down, and... 15 yards, there's 18 yards to go, and uh, gives a handoff right down the middle for very little yardage to about the 17-yard line. About 15 yards to go. And I'm sure that uh, Ron Hedges wants to get back in and get another shot at getting a touchdown drive for the second unit. The Bombers spread the offense, and a sack back at the five. No, William uh, Johnson gets away from the first hit, but he doesn't the second one, and he is sacked back at the three-yard line. 
You talk about the big time trouble. The Gales defense, because if that had occurred at up, out at the 15 yard line, it'd be third and just a couple. That's right. Now the uh, Bombers are back to the line of scrimmage on third and 15, and they go again with that quick hitter down the middle, and it is Abernathy breaking out at the 25 to 30, 35, 40, 50, 45, 40, and finally slid out of bounds at the 40 of Lancaster, a 43-yard ramble. By Abernathy breaks a long one, and Cleveland East in business trying to get their second touchdown. Biggest play of the game for the Bombers, 43-yard gain by Monolito Abernathy, and again, Abernathy gives way to Jeter in the backfield as he takes a breather, and Jeter takes it to the 36 and fumbles the football, and it's recovered by Rob Claridge, but I believe the official call since they got that touchdown about three minutes into the ball game. A gain of uh, five, second and five from the 36-yard line, uh, actually, and back to throw is William Johnson, and again, he overthrows George Howell so badly that he throws it out onto the good mobility and with a strong arm like that those are some of the ingredients you see in a shortstop or a center fielder. Third down and five yards to go for the Bombers and it is a quick hitter into the line with Abernathy and he chews his way to about the 34 at best. He will be well short of the first down and it will bring up a first down on fourth down here would kind of help their spirits a little bit. They've not completed a pass this evening. Wings both ways, one running back, and Johnson, quarterback sneaks, trying to get first down yardage, and I believe he did to the 30-yard line. Very near that 30 is William Johnson, and boy, is he a blur. He has very quick feet, and he was into that Lancaster. Happened on a better night. It is parents' night, and a lot of people are getting to play in front of their parents. Power eye formation, and again, they run the football off right tackle with Jeter, and he hit the stone blue wall, and has bounced backwards to the 31. Billy Burke leading the defensive charge with second down and 10 have the football. Well, I don't have to do a game Sunday. I guess I'll have to be on the couch watching our beloved Browns, Dick. On their way west, aren't they? When they play the Raiders in L.A. That still sounds strange to say the Raiders in L.A. instead of Oakland. Right? And he has been really off target with everything. Here's Jeter running right. Jeter cuts into the line and inside the 30 to the 27, a gain of three yards. Third down and seven coming on. Matt Farrell, Billy Burke are the first eight both ways. And carry uh, 315 pounds around out there like Alan Davis, and you got to be a tired boy. <laughs> Under center is Johnson. He gives to Abernathy, and Abernathy is taken down at the 25-yard line. He's running in behind Alan Davis and Jameel Avery. That's where they're getting most of their yardage. And officially now Abernathy, 16 carries for 100 yards, so he joins Jason Effinger as being a 100-yard plus rusher tonight. Fourth down and long, and the Bombers try to sneak for the first down again, and this time it appears that quarterback William Johnson was stopped about a yard short at the 21-yard line. They tried that earlier in the drive, getting a first down the earlier time, and nearly one here. And you can hide behind. This is a 6'2", 172-pounder. Jimmy Grilly gave way earlier, and Hedges is now at the helm. Lancaster brings it up with Stuyvesant in the slot and Householder in motion, and the handoff goes to the tailback. I would imagine it's Mike Cullison. And Cullison is out to the 25 or 26-yard line. Gain of three, second down and seven to go. Leads this game 30 to seven. We have 9.50 remaining. Ryan Christian is wide to the near side. Hedges with an eye formation behind him. Gives to his tailback, and Collison is hit at the 27-yard line. The line of scrimmage and driven backwards, or rather the 27 for a gain of a yard or so. Jamail uh, Avery makes that key points in this game. Gales bringing it back to the line of scrimmage. Hedges uh, looking into the backfield. He has only one running back, and he has trips right. Now he has his running back, Cullison, in motion. Hedges gets the snap and drops the throw. And he looks. And he goes deep. And he goes for Cullison, and it is overthrown and incomplete down at the 35-yard line of the Bombers. But Hedges that brings down fourth down and six, and Lancaster's Billy Burke is forced to kick it away. Abrams and Howe do for the There's the snap from center, and Burke uh, gets a uh, fooling around with the laces, but he gets the kick away, and it hits at the 49 and rolls to the 48 and near the 47-yard line. That's where the Bombers will play at first and 10. But a new Golden Gale fan. That's it. Double slot right. Johnson with the snap. 
fakes to his tailback, and he's back to throw, and he completes one to the 45-yard line in Lancaster Territory, a seven-yard pickup, and the receiver is Moses Marshall. For 11 on the roster? <laughs> Nothing there. <laughs> yes, they do. Paul Lane, their second-string quarterback. Back in the I formation come the Bombers, second down in a short three. I formation, and William Johnson gets the snap. And he gives to Jeter, and Jeter is hit at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for a very oh, short boy. yard, bringing on third down and a couple. Well, that Turner in at defensive end. They're uh, starting to filter that defense with some uh, second-string players. B.J. Turner, a sophomore, getting some uh, baptism of fire. There's that quarterback sneak on third and two, and it uh, might be. It's very oh, close to first down good. yardage, and again, it's that 315-pound center, Allen Davis, who personally is wet that play because Langster would be really looking for it, but if you're Cleveland East, that play has worked, and they do need a first down. We have six and a half minutes remaining in this game, and Johnson under center, and again they try it, and this time the Gale defense is all over him, but he might have turned sideways and fell forward, and he did. And that was William Johnson's personal victory because they had Allen Davis absolutely racked up at the line of scrimmage, and the not the way you're supposed to do in the high school. They want to get this game over with. <laughs> Here come the Bombers back to the line of scrimmage at the Lancaster 42-yard line. They move in an I formation with a slot to the right side, and here comes the penalty. That is Chris Holt coming into the Lancaster defense, and he replaces Andy Deem, the big 210-pound senior. There's a draw play, and uh, doesn't get much. Uh, the play started at the 47 and ends up at the 46, a gain of only a yard, and it was Brian Jeter carrying the football. Has, and a lot of that has come against the second unit. Moses Marshall up uh, tight on the line now. They have a slot to the near side, however, and an eye formation for Johnson. He throws, and he completes his second pass of the night to George Howell at the 35-yard line, and Howell is racked up at the 33. He, on a third down and one, they have gone to the well many times on that quarterback sneak, but it has been effective. Let's see what they do here. And this time, they'll not go to that. They'll give the ball to... Uh, Monolito Abernathy and he does not get there in fact he may have lost the yard back to the 34 so maybe that quarterback sneaks in follows this game on Z103 and then scoreboard scores from the uh, area stay tuned high formation fourth down and two yards to go and the quarterback to throw and he throws into a crowd and it is bobbled and dropped and a flag is down and it may be an interference against the Gale defense it didn't look like they went away at it. They're trying to score first and last. That's it. Jeter is the tailback. Abernathy is the fullback. Moses Marshall is in the slot to the near side inside George Howell. Johnson rolling left. Being chased from behind. Turns and gets the pass away, but it is deflected and incomplete. It was uh, selected their play. Abernathy and Jeter line it up, and now it's a power eye backfield with Jeter the deep back and he gets the pitch and he sweeps and cuts inside a block and gets to the 15 and dives to the 14 and that's as far as he can go a gain of three third down in them last night that was like watching a track meet they are quick out of the power eye again on third down and seven yards to go three step drop at a pass that is deflected and nearly caught uh, but an incompletion bringing on fourth down for the Bombers with 3-12 remaining and that 7-0 and then Lancaster back with five scores but no extra points. One running back, William Johnson on fourth down and long back to throw it. He fires and it is in the end zone. Cop touchdown for the Bombers. The pass was to Jerome for the exit. Well... The Blue Bombers score almost three minutes in the game and almost with three minutes left to go in the game, they score. And we've got another Lancaster quarterback warming up on the sideline, Dave. And the Bombers go for two, and it is unsuccessful as uh, the quarterback, William Johnson, is uh, sacked back at the 12-yard line. And the score remains 30 to five for all of our scores following the Tom McCurdy show, but one of interest to Lancaster fans. Zanesville defeats Logan tonight, 14-7. to The Blue Devils off to a good start this year. There is the kickoff, but the ball at the 35-yard line has fallen on, and that's where play will be. And he is at the quarterback position for the Golden Gales, the third quarterback the Gales have used tonight. 
He gets the snap and he pitches to his tailback and a sweep to the right side, cutting it back into the 38, the 39, and the 40-yard line is Jimmy Palmer, Palmer's a running back, up. sophomore. One Jeremy Hoskins is now in the offense. He's a wing back for Lancaster. Uh, the Gales also have uh, Ryan Francisco in the game. And there's the handoff to the tailback and out over the 40 to the 45-yard line comes Jimmy Palmer. And he's knocked down and just at the down call. So it's first and 10 at the 46-yard line for the Golden Gales. Time is a, an enemy of the Gales now with 2.08 remaining and a 30-13 score. The first man through gets the handoff and takes it out over the 50-yard line for a gain of 5 to the 40. Ron Hedges finished his night 0 for 3. And now they have put it out to 48, so it's second down and 6, or 4 rather. Quarterback Steiner gets the ball, rolls on a quarterback option to the 48, maybe the 47, getting a yard, bringing on third down for the Golden Gales, and Keith Smithfield and Harp Summers with that one. Steiner sets his offense at the 48-yard line. Dayton Meadowdale on the road, and then a much improved Chillicothe team will come to Lancaster for game number five. Lancaster was lined up three yards off that out for next week. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining in this game. It's 30 to 13. Lancaster leads. First down and 15 yards to go from the 48-yard line now. And the Gales go to a running play down the middle, and uh, it is uh, Bigham again. Uh, begin the victorious uh, celebration here in a moment. And the Gales get a snap just at the buzzer, and that is it. They will not allow the play to stand, and it is over. The Golden Gales remain undefeated this year for the 30th.